Hey friends, this is Derek from TCI, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about cabling fails. To celebrate the recently passed one year anniversary of my channel and all these videos about networking, I'm giving away a network tester later in this video. Stay tuned for how you can win one and get that for free from us. So before I launch into the videos and talk about these various uh, fails that we've come across in the past year or so, let me just stipulate that the team picked these out for me and they're in no particular order and I may or may not remember them. I might not have visited each of these sites, uh, but I'm very much interested in seeing what the boys have picked out that they remember from this past year. So with no further ado, let's begin. Oh, this is a, this is a fantastic example of what not to do. So what I'm tracking here in this example is this white wire. Those anchors are worse than anything I've ever done. Don't use those kind of anchors, but notice the hole. Notice where it's going. This is important. So it comes through to the exterior of the building. And then we got some anchors. I don't love them, but at least they're there. And then it, the wire goes up through this, uh, through this area here. And then we give up on the anchors. Oops, don't need those. So then we're following sort of the structure of the building. And it turns out that this wire ran upstairs to a closet that is on another floor entirely. And that's where the telecom services were. So it was a shortcut that the installer took to get done quicker. And why don't you do this? I mean, you could do this. It's working, right? That's a interior cable that's exposed to rain, sunlight. <laughs> vandalism uh you know people do steal copper they'll grab that right off the wall if they get the opportunity so there, there's so much about this that's obviously wrong uh but you know in the in the interest of saving time people take some pretty interesting shortcuts that it's worth reviewing what not to do there Ooh, okay yeah that's a bad one I remember this. This is an administration office uh, somewhere and they just had nowhere to put this and they tucked it up above like a filing cabinet. Uh, let's talk about what went wrong here. So there's a couple things that went wrong, but one that jumps out at me immediately is not so much the mess. The mess is okay. Messes are normal. But if you take a look at that ceiling tile, they poked a hole directly above uh, the, the rack, right in the middle there. And, and you don't do that. You just generally don't do that. So this is still salvageable, except for that hole. Like we'd have to rearrange the tiles, maybe take a tile from somewhere else and swap in order to make that hole go away. Otherwise, it's just a case of inexperience. Like the person who put this together and patched it in has had to manipulate it, it looks like to me, over the years. They've moved things in and out, and it's gotten a little crazy, but it's not really all that bad. There's, there's plenty here we can salvage. It's that one hole in the top that I'm finding a little bit weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is classic. This always happens in warehouses. So what, what will happen is they'll need a printer or they'll need a Wi-Fi or something in the middle of their warehouse and there's just nowhere to put wires. And the individual that got stuck with this job, like if you look there, they just sort of hung it to the nearest uh, two by four structure. Very common in warehouses, of course. And so what's wrong in this scenario? Well, one, it's gonna get hit by a forklift. It's gonna get run over. Those cables aren't gonna last very long. I think I'm looking at one that may have been cut and repaired already in the corner there. And the devices are likely to just go offline. And one thing that you don't want when you've got a network is something precarious like this between the front and back of your warehouse that could go offline and just ruin your day. You'd be looking for why is the front or the back offline and you'd have to crawl around looking for, well, what thing doesn't have lights on it that might've got kicked or bumped or who knows what. Uh, definitely want to go higher than this when you're building your networks. Oh yeah, I remember this one. This one was a 
office space and this kind of thing happens slowly, not necessarily all at once. They have a switch buried under there somewhere and I'm sure it looked really good when there was only four or five wires, but then as they expanded their office and they added things, you end up in a precarious position where you've kind of overdone it and then you realize you picked a bad spot to put this. There should have been a rack or at the very minimum should have come through the wall. You know, I would have wanted to cut through the back of that uh, cabinetry just below it. I would have cut an outlet, put a like a bristle or a brush plate and I would have brought everything through to the switch. If we didn't have space for a full wall mounting cabinet, which is perfectly fair, a lot of times you don't. I, I would have definitely uh, done this a little better, but I remember this one and thinking like, how did that spaghetti get there? But I think it grew over time. I don't recognize this equipment or this space. So this is one of many anonymous uh, places that we come across where this is their whole internet setup. And I, if, if yours doesn't look just like this, I would be very surprised. There's people out there and this is probably a, just a microcosm of what your office is looking like, right? Wherever you work. And there's a lot here that you just don't do, but the basics are that don't you care about your network? This is your business. You, how do you run credit cards if this isn't working? You know, how do you answer the phone? How do you browse the internet? How do you get to your websites that run your uh, CRM or any of that stuff? You, you would think if this was important and your business relied on it, that you would maybe organize it a little better, put a battery backup on it, take better care of this so it didn't get bumped, stepped on, covered up, overheated by papers. It's an interesting thing that people do. I notice it a lot. They'll put it behind everything else and it's forgotten. This is a classic photo that I use a lot when I am showing people what I think is wrong with a network in general. I will often bring this one out and there are a lot of issues to cover in this one photo. There's a lot going on here all at once and I cannot fix this. This is not something I did fix. This uh, was a survey and we looked at it and I won't say where it is, but it's somewhere if you lived around here, you would recognize the name and uh, I don't, does not inspire confidence in their operations. That's all I can say about that. So I hope that uh, it looks better. This was taken a over maybe a, near the beginning of the year. And I, I, I hope that they have had time to fix this, but there is so much to start with. The patching, horrendous. The cross connects go across sideways. You can see there a whole bundle of patches go sideways. There were so many better ways to handle this. And it's a bit like self-defense when people ask, how do I get out of a chokehold? He's got me by the neck. And the answer was, you screwed up a long time ago. You, there are many defenses you should have put yourself in. You should have never gotten a chokehold. This is sort of the network equivalent of being in one. It's too important to unplug and that makes fixing it really, really hard. So all I can say about this is, it's a shame. This is a great one. This is the door to the server room. This isn't a network fail per se, but it's a fail. They needed to replace the door strike, take out the electronic locks that prevented access to the server room and they didn't have the right tools. And so they destroyed the door frame. And I just found that very amusing. So it had to go up. I believe this. Oh man, I love this one. I love this one so much. This is one of my favorites from the past uh, year or so. You can clearly see what's happened, but what is my favorite part about this is the end user was with me and he was not ashamed of this. He was into it. He liked what he had here. And the reason he liked what he had is because the equipment is kind of nice. It's a nice Cisco. There's some nice equipment in this rack or shelf, if you will. 
And what I was uh, asked to do was add wires to it, not to clean it up, just to extend it a little more, make an even bigger mess. So we did, we made a bigger mess out of that. I added wires as requested and it was just time and materials. And I would have liked artistically to have made a better product out of this, but they were not interested. And sometimes you just got to take the gig as it is and head on out and don't worry about what it looks like as long as it works. You know, if it really truly breaks, they'll call back. So you don't want to end up like these people, right? You need a network tester and I'm going to give one away to somebody. And all I need you to do is leave a comment on this video. doesn't matter if you're subscribed, any of that stuff, just leave me a comment. And if you guys don't have anything to talk about, uh, I'll start you off. I think mayonnaise overrated. You can use it anywhere. You can use butter, just use butter. Don't put that stuff on sandwiches. No good. I'm going to leave this video up for one week and then I'm going to go through all the comments. I'm going to pick one at random. Doesn't have to be funny. Doesn't have to be witty. Just has to be a comment and I will pick a winner and get in touch with you and ship you a network tester. Here's what was an entire switching center. So the switching center, this is an interesting one. I thought because of the dichotomy here, there's really nice cabling that explodes into sort of chaos of spaghetti. And there was no reason for that. And I certainly got the impression that the installers, whoever they were, they knew what they were doing. They did a really good job with the bundles, with the pathing and with the labeling, it was top notch labeled. And they just didn't seem to care about the end product, what it looked like. So what's happening in the shot, all the old switches are removed and new switches are going to go in. But before they can go in, we got to clean this up. This is a disaster. It's not maintainable by any stretch. So, so we did, we ended up pulling all the patches out. You could see that they're a sort of amphenol connector and it's an unusual thing that connects to the hundred pair block. And there was a matching hundred pair block on the patch panel side in the relay frame. And that, that you don't see too often. So we ended up replacing all of this with patch cords and patch panels and trying to do it a little bit nicer. And I don't have the after shots. They're lost to time. I apparently forgot to film on any of that, but the teardown, uh, was really remarkable because they were well labeled and we had to maintain where everything was and this was a, This was a weird one Oh, yeah, the messes are getting bigger bigger This one is hard to forget. I took this whole room apart There's so many things wrong here. There's no crossbar just looking at that relay rack. It's you could push it over uh, there were UPSs stacked on top of dead UPSs, layered. I could go on forever. There's so much going on here. The patch panel is a disaster like it always is. There's an old phone system back there. This one, I tore it apart. Not one single thing in this room that you see stayed inside. I took it all out. It took a couple of weeks to rebuild this from scratch. And the biggest problem is that there's legacy stuff layered up. So you've got old equipment piled on top of older equipment and the new equipment piled on top of the old equipment. Almost everything you see here is stacked on something else that isn't working. And so just as a friendly piece of advice or a lesson to learn from some of these examples, keep only what you're actively using in your network stack. There are so many things that you can just forget what they were there for. If they weren't, uh, you know, in active use, you might just keep it because what if, but then you're not going to remember either in a year. And if you move on to a new job, it's a meaningless device and you end up a little bit of uh, what they would call cargo culting, where you keep things there, but you don't know why it just is there because it's there and you weren't there to, be the original person installing it. 
So you keep dragging it along with you, network after network, upgrade after upgrade, the old stuff stays in, still plugged in, still blinky lights. Nobody can explain what any of it does. And the problem that you run into with a situation like this is when there's troubleshooting to be done, where do you begin? What do you unplug? Where do you start? What's important? What isn't important? So I tore this down to absolutely nothing and rebuilt it starting from the router, then one switch at a time until I had the network back up and running. And I was very proud of the final product, which I can't show here because it shows a lot of proprietary information after I was done. It was kind of obvious where this is going to be from. <clears throat> so I couldn't share that information, but it's so important not to get caught up in things that don't matter. Clean your network if you get the opportunity. I remember this. This is at the bottom of a condo, one of the skyscrapers in downtown Honolulu. And this skyscraper is supporting hundreds, if not maybe even three, 400, I'm not even sure how many units. And this is their network that the vendor equipment is plugged into. So they've got vendors that bring them building automation stuff, uh, solar panel controllers, Wi-Fi controllers, anything that's measuring electricity or the speed of a motor somewhere, light, light usage, things like that. There's all kind of vendors that come into a large facility and they're each in charge of just one little box. And those boxes start to add up, stack up, and just become incredibly confusing. And every single one of them is doing an important job. So it would have been good if someone had gone through this and created a space for these things to live and labeled each one and tried to create some sort of organization or hierarchy of what devices are more important than others. Uh, but as it is, everything is completely anonymous and on this wall, and it is really hard to determine what their purposes were. And this is one we walked away from because they didn't want to do what needed to be done. So unfortunately, I'm sure it still looks like this to this day. And if there's ever a problem, it's a long, arduous troubleshooting process, and I wish them well with it. It's unfortunate that it turned out like that. Oh man, it's fun. Fun to look at the bad ones and blow off some steam, right? I, uh, I don't mean to embarrass anyone. If you recognized your own work site in one of these shots, no digs at you. I'm just going over what not to do and we're having a little fun with the mess that you've made. I'll see you in the next one. Happy network building, everyone.